What is <laughs> Tech Yes Citizens? Today, we are going to go through the Tech Yes Studio in 2021 and have a look at what's changed since the last time I did a studio tour. Now, the biggest thing is I'm still at the same location, but I've added a lot of RGB into the mix. Now, there's a big question that I've been getting asked about OLEDs. And it's like, well, Brian, after using OLEDs as your main drivers, do you have problems? Is the burn-in an issue? So we'll get straight on into that because this is the biggest change in my entire studio is that I went from this main setup here, and this is now still like a main setup. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, for this here being my main setup where I'm using two 55-inch OLEDs and they're both 4K, one being the B7, which is from 2017, and this one here being the CX. Now I'm gonna say in terms of OLEDs, they are absolutely amazing in terms of viewing angles, colors, and especially this one here, 4K 120Hz, but there is one big problem that I'm having with the OLEDs, and that is that they're too addictive. And this is like, I'm, you might be sitting there laughing, but this is serious. Like I, I sit on these things and I just get lost in playing games like StarCraft 2, which is from like 2009. I'm, I just enjoy playing games on the OLEDs too much to the point where I was thinking of just going back to like 4K 60 Hertz monitors with matte coatings on them and 32 inch because I think they would be better uh, for me in terms of just not getting distracted so much. Because if you guys didn't know, one of my problems is that I can get addicted to PC gaming and it's, it's one of those things where it's not healthy. Like I don't think it's a healthy thing. But anyway, let's continue on with the studio tour. And I will say today's video is sponsored by BZ Future where they did send out some really cool things. And I thought like some of the things I don't like and we'll be talking about some of the things which I think are not for me, but, but some of the things like this here, this mouse bungee from Moto Speed is absolutely amazing. It's a little mouse bungee, but also has a four port USB hub and a bit of RGB bling. I think this thing right here, you guys will love a gadget like this if you want to get a cool mouse bungee. But let's go through the rest of the setup here. Ultralight 2 for my main editing setup. And then we've got here a deteriorated, heavily deteriorated Microsoft ergonomic keyboard that I absolutely love because of the shape. And people will say, Brian, why don't you get and use the mechanical keyboards? They're so much better. And I'm gonna, my argument against that will be, we all use the mice for the shape. And shape is a huge thing with gaming mice then the same could be said for keyboards. For me, the shape of the ergonomics is absolutely phenomenal. And I wanna see uh, what companies could do. I think because the patent has run out for the ergonomic, I think a lot of companies could make some really cool designs just like this one here, but with mechanical key switches. I'd be looking forward to that because I absolutely love the shape of the Microsoft Ergos, the OG ones back in the day. This one has been running, I think, for nearly 20 years now in terms of production. And I've also got another one that I picked up on a deal. And I got this for $10, by the way. And I got another one for $20, and they go very cheap on the market. Then we've got a Stream Deck. I use that for switching scenes when I'm live streaming. And then we've got the Elgato Wave 3, which I absolutely love. Absolutely phenomenal microphone in terms of ease of use, but also the quality of the voice work that I do for you guys. You guys always say you love seeing this thing on live streams. Then we've got the Virtuoso. I use this for around the studio with the wireless adapter for talking and working at the same time. Very handy. Then we got back there. That's an upcoming video. With, we've got some uh, laptop CPUs that we're going to be using with Z370. And then we've got here, the main setup. This is the main rig that I'm using at the moment. And you may be wondering, like, what's going on here? You've got the, uh, this is what used to be Darth Jar Jar. I made it work in terms of functionality. So it is a bit of a messy rig. It's definitely not anywhere near as good looking as the synthetic sewer build that we put together. But you may be noticing I'm using a 6800 XT. And this is one big thing for me because I wanted to try AMD. For years I haven't, I've been using Nvidia cards on my main workstations. And I'm gonna point out, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. I'm gonna point out the big differences at this point in time for me personally. And that is that the Nvidia cards with RTX Studio, they do work better in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the main video editing software I use to edit videos for you guys. But the 6800 XT also has, at least with the OLEDs here, I've been seeing some driver issues. The most annoying one is when I leave my computer, I either idling, I'll be um, 
watching some YouTube videos while I'm working and the screens will automatically turn off or I'll just turn them off manually, what happens is it just won't wake up. And I have to like hard reset my PC in order to get the signal out again. So that's, the, uh, that's a driver issue I'm having with the 6800 XT at this point in time. It is a little bit annoying, but, but other than that, it has been solid. We've also got uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM and the 18 core 7980XE in this big beast right here, which does a great job for 4K video editing. And we've got more RGB here, we've got some grog, and then we've also got the Colo lights. These things are really cool in that you can control them by your smartphone if you want to. You can also manually control them from the back of the card, and they make a really good backdrop especially when I'm live streaming or doing talking head videos from this setup, these things really make that backdrop come to life. And we've also got a Yong Nuo YN300 Air 2. We'll talk about that a little bit later when we go through the camera gear and lighting. And then we've also got some more subtle RGB and a ring light. We've also got the Panasonic G7. This is a Japanese edition, which you can't change over into English. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right here if we turn it on. You can see there, you just got Japanese in the uh, system, but I get around that because I can read a little bit of Japanese and it's easy to navigate for me. And then we've got the uh, key light and that provides the lighting from when I'm live streaming. And then we've got two more uh, key lights up there as well. This one being the air, so it's a smaller, more efficient version. And then we've got over here, one more key light air to provide lighting if I'm using the PC from this way or if I need a hair light for the camera work. Now, behind that is some RGB. This is a new addition to the Tech yes Studio, which you guys say is uh, really popping in the background. So for this, I used a uh, Colo Light RGB strips. These are the five meter versions. They've also got a two meter version and all up, this will cost you if you want to get a big backdrop like this with ambient RGB lights. I'm using in total 20 meters of RGB and you can control that from your smartphone if you want to. I've also got a remote for it, but basically this has a uh, big piece of acrylic and it's diffused and that essentially allows the RGB light to show up in the background like it does. And I really like this for when the it's dark at night too and you need that ambient lighting behind your monitor if you're using the setup. So that was a really cool addition that we did in terms of also covering up holes from what I uh, was changing. I used to have two monitors in the backdrop here and I've changed that over just now to a single ultra wide, which uh, the monitor has automatically turned itself off. But here we've got the main synthetic sewer. Now, in terms of building something like this right now, especially with the RTX 3080s, they are ridiculously pricey. And uh, who knows when these prices of these graphics cards will come back to normal because at the moment it's looking like we're either suffering two scenarios and that is either inflation nation where the, the prices will just grow into that new norm or we will see a crash. But either way, something has to give. It's not gonna be a smooth sailing line like I've been saying here on the channel. But in the, in the meantime, I just, at this point in time, I wouldn't recommend going out and building an RTX 3080 system unless of course you've got uh, huge amounts of cash flow and you can afford that but it, i mean this build right here i've been i was saving up for a long time to build this thing and i hooked up with designs by ifr corey and we built this custom pc and it was absolutely amazing the whole process and i think the finished look just shows that corey's work is on another level where we called it synthetic sewer but this is hooked up now to the corsair k100 this keyboard is insane in that the uh, speed at which the keys actuate is pretty much the best. I did a review on this thing and it was insane if you're gaming and you want a really fast keyboard for that. And then we've got here the MZ1 Zeiss Rail. So one of my really good friends, one of my best friends on the Gold Coast here, uh, Zai, I've known him for a while. We met years ago when we were both doing a collaboration together on YouTube and we just hit it off and we're really good friends. And since then he's been working with Extrify to design his own mouse and this is what the product is this is actually an engineering sample he gifted to me and i was very grateful i'm using this on the ultra wide gaming setup and i absolutely love this mouse for fps so if you want something to aim with and you're a fingertip gripper especially or you're a, a claw gripper or you just have really small hands in your palm grip then this mouse is going to be an absolute winner 
I really love what he's done with this thing. I think it's awesome that a YouTuber is designing a mouse and you can get one of these if you want to support Zai. I'll put the link in the description below. Then we've got right here an RGB headset, which I gotta say, these are extremely comfortable. One of the most comfortable pair of headsets I have ever tried on. The RGB on the sides, I don't know if that's going to be for you or not. If you love RGB, then you're definitely gonna love this headset right here. But surprisingly, the sound imaging on these was extremely good for a closed back headphone and also the mic wasn't half bad. One thing I will say though is that they are a little bit tinny on the tinny side, but they've also got heavy bass. So if you like that V-shaped EQ profile, then you'll definitely love these. But if you're like me and you prefer a more warmer headphone, then you might wanna try something like the L1s. That's my personal favorites. Then moving over here, we've got the test bed setup. This is the Intel side of things, and then we've got the AMD side of things. So for the Intel side, we have the 11900K currently, and this is hooked up. I'm testing out a Z590 ASUS ROG motherboard here. But the problem is right now, I've been very slow to do the Z590 coverage, even like having this stuff for a few weeks here. I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I've been really jaded when it comes to doing a lot of uh, this newer stuff. And that of course has to relate to the graphics cards where you can't really build a new PC right now because you can't really get your hands on a graphics card at a decent price. So a lot of this new stuff, the reason to get it isn't really there. And so I've just been having a really tough time personally seeing the point of reviewing a lot of this newer stuff where I think the used stuff is a lot more exciting. But in terms of some of the other gadgets right here, I just quickly whacked in some uh, XPG RAM that I got off a deal just to test that it was working. And you can see here, it does work absolutely fine. Though I will say out of this whole test setup right here, one of my favorite products to date and the easily the best CPU cooler is the H115i RGB Platinum. This thing just does an absolutely amazing job. The 280 mil rad, the 2140 mil fans, so quiet and it remains so cool. This thing hasn't missed a beat. Then we've got two random sticks of memory that I was testing out to make sure they work and they do work absolutely fine. Then we've got the K70 RGB special edition keyboard with a custom wrist rest there. I always recommend people get a custom latex wrist rest if they're serious about spending long time and long hours on a keyboard. Then we've got the G102, just to match up that white aesthetic on this test setup right here. Then we've got a 4K monitor using for uh, testing out both the Intel and the AMD test system here, which is X570 Phantom Gaming X. At the moment, we've got the 5950X in this thing. So when I need to test out a graphics card from Nvidia or AMD, I can test it on both Intel and AMD and get you guys reliable results. We'll see if there's any discrepancies between the two platforms. Then we've got another Corsair cooler right here. This is the Capellex version, but I will say that I personally prefer the H115i RGB Platinum. I think out of the box, this thing is just the go-to for epic CPU cooling. Then over here, we've got the Dare You 10 keyless keyboard that uh, BZ Future sent over. Now this keyboard is honestly extremely good. So we're gonna talk about the mouse pad soon, which I actually don't really like. But this keyboard right here is absolutely phenomenal. The build quality, the color scheme, they've also got different color schemes with it. And you've got a magnetic cover, which if you're using this for traveling is gonna save you a lot of hassle if you wanna clean the keyboard. You just take that off, get rid of the dirt, and then put it back on. And it's gonna be very functional as well in terms of its size and weight. And you've also got the option there to take out the USB uh, type C connector to carry this with ease. And the best thing is you've also got optional RGB, which you can then control from the keyboard itself. So very sturdy keyboard. You've got the choice of Cherry MX blues, browns, and reds. And I absolutely love what this keyboard's bringing. Then we've got this mouse pad here from Moto Speed. Hard surface. I'm not a big fan of hard surface mouse pads. I do prefer, as you can see here around my studio, I've got the cloth, cloth, and then also cloth soft style mouse pads. But if you like a hard style mouse pad and you like RGB on a mouse pad, then this is certainly going to be for you. Me personally, I think the RGB on a mouse pad is a little bit annoying because you've got this extra cable now to contend with. And then over here, we've got another product from Dare You. This is a, I don't know what to say with this one. It feels like a Zowie FK2, I believe. So if you're into a hybrid uh, fingertip sort of palm grip uh, sort of grip there, 
and you like low button height, then this mouse is definitely gonna be great for FPS. Very good mouse, very good shape, and the build quality on this thing is extremely good. So if you're looking for an alternative to an FK2, then this mouse is definitely going to deliver. And then next up here, we've got a $100 tripod. This one said it was heavy duty because the last one broke. Hopefully this one does stand the test of time. But it's funny because I've still got this tripod right here. This was one that I bought from a junk store in Japan for 50 bucks. And now apparently some of my friends are telling me like, Brian, how did you snap this thing up? Apparently these things are going for like in excess of $200, but I'm starting to see why because they were just so well built back in the day. This thing has stood the test of time. I've had it around the studio since I did that parts hunt back in Japan a long time ago. But speaking of camera gear and production stuff, I've got two of these in recently. They are the Godox SL60 watts and these things are just like they bright they're really bright you've got all the way from 10 percent to 100 percent and they're soft boxes even though i've got one of them that's not on soft box at the moment that's just providing like a pin light and these things like for what they are they're really good value they're not too loud they've got a little fan in them because they're a 60 watt led but they provide so much lighting if you're in a home studio i think some people are saying like you should get the 150 watt i mean if you're filming outdoors Definitely the 150 uh, watt is going to be uh, beneficial fighting against sunlight. But in terms of inside a studio, the 60 watts are absolutely perfect. You don't need to get anything more. You can save yourself a lot of money by just going with the 60 watts. And they're going to be a little bit lighter, so you won't have to buy as expensive as a beam there to support it. Anyhow, we got the desk here. I added in RGB lighting to this desk and that's been really good actually because it's got a little lip here that comes out of the desk. So whenever I'm building PCs and we've got two builds in progress at the moment, uh, whenever I'm building PCs and screws get to the edge, they don't fall off the table. So that's one really good benefit of this RGB lighting. Plus it provides a good sort of extra element for when I'm shooting uh, photos of the builds before I flip them. And so that's a new addition. We've also got this 360 Hertz monitor here, uh, which Azus sent in and I use it all the time for testing. It's really good for testing our system input latency and doing other tests because it has an inbuilt uh, latency module inside. But this monitor right here being 360 Hertz, it isn't cheap by any means. So speaking of cheap, this LED lighting here, it was pretty cheap to add in. I think I spent $80 in total getting this done with a five meter strip. And then my friend came around with his tools and we uh, got the desk here because I was lucky because this desk was really thick. We we're able to dig into it and then that was able to put the LED lights in and it worked out perfectly. The other tools new to the Tech yes Studio if you're into fitness. One of these things here, I got this for 30 Aussie dollars. I absolutely love this thing. It's like one of those sit up support things. And when I first saw this thing, I thought it was a gimmick, but then I tried and I was like, damn, that really, really gets the abs working. So can really recommend one of these as opposed to a lot of that other stuff you see on um, fitness channels and stuff. It's a lot of it's gimmicky, but then we've got the weights there for just sometimes I do a bit of it. I haven't been doing weight training as much as I'd like to. I will get back into that soon. Then we've got the new setups here where I got this desk on sale on the used market for $30 and it's a clear sort of glossy desk. It was pretty much like brand new and I've been using this set here for B-roll where I got these from the local hardware store. They were just some floor tiles. And I was like, well, they're gonna look pretty cool as a backdrop. So decided to make this a new little set for filming uh, smaller products, not so much builds, but individual products like you see here. And all up, this costs like, I think 50, $60. So for the backdrop and for the little table. But I also decided to add in a little light here, which I got for 10 bucks from Ikea. And that sort of just adds a little bit of spice to this whole set right here. Then we've got another set which I put together, but I found myself uh, using this one more for selling PCs where we got these 3D tiles in the backdrop. And then you'll notice I've got some RGB bling right here. These are the Yong Nuos and they're a little bit expensive and you do have to get your own adapters for them. And so I've, I had to go buy the adapter separately and then the light but they do provide so much lighting in terms of RGB and you can use them as normal lights too. I think if you're starting out in the world of film, these YN300 Airs are definitely gonna be a really good investment. I've actually got two of them right now, which gives you a nice look if you're getting the set all set up for whatever you're filming. In this case, it's a used banger that we're gonna be putting up on good old Gamtree.
Anyway, sitting down now, summing up the studio tour, I've also got some cool little tips, and that is if you want some cool coasters you, for your drinks, then you can pull them out of broken hard drives. This right here is a one terabyte platter, and I also managed to pull out some really strong magnets out of those hard drives as well. Anyhow guys, with the studio right now, I'm sort of at that point where I don't know if I should change back to 4K 60 Hertz monitors or keep going on the OLED, because I do want to get more productive and stop being sidetracked for gaming. I think that's the main conflict I've been having with myself lately. And I've been learning to get over that because in December, halfway through December, Cyberpunk came through and I binged through that. Then I started playing StarCraft 2 and Dota 2. And that was just, it's, I still play some StarCraft 2 and it's so enjoyable on the OLEDs to the point where I've got to cap my addiction and sort of like the OLED feeds that. So I don't know if you guys had have had similar problems where you get addicted to video games, but it's one sort of Achilles heel that I know is up with myself. And I don't mind talking about it publicly. And I just want to get back onto being, uh, you guys want me to get back to being as well, going, hitting up the gym more and being buff yes city and going out and getting more deals. That's the uh, verdict that a lot of people are telling me. So I'll get back to that in the next uh, couple of months. And in the meantime, I may change out those OLEDs for, as I said, for the more boring monitors. I think that's a big sort of personal goal of mine. But I mean, that in ways is a testament to how good the OLEDs are. It's just an unexpected thing that's come out of it in the last few months for me personally. But speaking of everything else around the studio here, it's mainly like lighting, RGB, and cool little gadgets that I've added into the studio since the last time. And with that aside, if you guys wanna know anything more about the Tech Yes Studio and stuff that we use here behind the scenes, but be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. I'll put all the stuff and prices that I can find for all this stuff in the description below as well. So if you wanna check out some of the cool things that we featured here today, and if it's a decent price, then I'll drop it below. If it's a ripoff, I'll just leave it out of the description. But other than that, uh, we got the question of the day here which comes from, it's actually a really good one. It comes from Joe Mars and they said, how is Jensen still not fired? And they're talking about the video we recently did with the uh, 3060 Ti's being sold for ridiculous amounts of money. And the fact that individuals were able to get so many of these cards. And in terms of Jensen being fired, he's not gonna be fired anytime soon. I mean, he would have to resign himself if he was to leave Nvidia because over the track record of Nvidia, he has grown the sales, he's grown the company, which is what mainly what shareholders care about. They care about if they're getting a return on their investment from Nvidia. They don't really care about the gamer. Well, especially they don't care about the gamer and whether they're getting a graphics card or not. But in the long term, they actually should care about gamers because that is their long term loyal customer base. And so I think Jensen could take a look around and implement those mining limiters sooner if he wants to take care of that loyal base. Even though he's not going to get as good of a profit as he would in the short term, I think in the long term, it would do better for him to consider that, especially if say for instance, Intel comes along and they start making gaming graphics cards and they put in just anti-mining algorithms that lock uh, miners out then they could build loyalty towards their brand and take it away from Nvidia. Same with AMD. So I guess that's one thing to consider for uh, Jensen and Nvidia is that they do want to definitely take care of those gamers in the long term. But in terms of the short term, yes, the gaming graphics cards have been going to a lot of miners and that's been causing a lot of disruption in the industry. But in terms of Jensen, I don't think he's going to get fired anytime soon. He was, I think, like last year, rated the number one CEO of the world. Anyhow, hope that answers that question. And if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech, yes, content, be sure to hit that like button for us and also smash that sub, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.